You remember when we thought technology would be the great equalizer? Its ability to reopen conversations might still help get us there. We've learned how to speak to the world, but we also need to learn how to listen. One of the places this is most apparent is in crisis and humanitarian response. Members of an affected population who have always been the first responders, and those who would like to help them directly through mutual aid, are now more capable than ever to self-organize and advocate via communication technologies. And that means response as equal at scale. The formal response sectors, be they governmental, nonprofit, military humanitarian assisted disaster relief, or non governmental organizations, are full of good people who want to help others, whose budgets have been slashed while mandates have increased. Disasters are worse due to climate change, increasing the severity of natural events, and that affecting larger and more concentrated populations of people. The formal sectors are trying. FEMA's field innovation team deployed to Sandy to focus on the experience of the affected population, including interacting with Occupy Sandy and Recovers.org. The International Red Cross Climate Center is educating and including wider audiences using games to explain resource allocation and disaster planning. The World Bank released 30-odd grants this year to test out infrastructural innovations, and Doctors Without Borders is focused this year on technology use ranging from telemedicine to social media. So we have a formal sector ready and willing to engage with a wider audience, both for ethical reasons of equality and inclusion, and also because mutual aid is the only logically viable option for surge capacity at scale. But are there available options for this? An ecosystem of digital response has emerged over the past 10 years, with a massive bloom in the past four. It includes groups like Standby Task Force, which helps parse large data sets that drift out of affected areas. Humanitarian OpenStreetMap team empowers local populations to define and literally map out their space, thus determining how the rest of the world sees them. These base layers are used by official and informal responders alike for situational awareness, incident reporting via platforms like Ushahidi, and triaging workflows with Tarifa. Humanity Road helps people self-organize via social media interaction and data processing. NYC Prepared provides digital kits for people to easily start doing resource and volunteer management via readily available technologies. And crisis badges give people independent credentialing for better self-assignment and clarity in chaos. The exhaust of these communications of planning and delivering mutual aid directly to each other are currently seen as simple inputs to the formal sector of response, with associated concerns of validation and privacy. But if governance is in service to the governed, this should instead be seen as an ability to hear the world in high resolution and at high fidelity. In this, we have a chance to re-examine our social structures and a chance to build new ones. So how do we bridge this gap between desire and reality? Similar to what Space Federation did for hacker, maker, and co-working spaces beginning in 2009, the Digital Humanitarian Network connects the myriad groups in the digital response space in order to provide a legible interface to the formal sector. This same grouping acts as a protective shield around the adaptivity and experimentation that makes these groups so effective and relevant. The Open Humanitarian Initiatives held space for formal and informal to build their technologies to more easily share data. On conferences such as Digital Humanitarian Summits and traditional conferences like the International Conference of Crisis Mappers provide a capacity-building space for people to get to know the ecosystem and organizations better and to build better strategies based on that knowledge. Single-serving hackathons like Everyone Hacks and Hacking for Disaster 2.0, as well as global synchronous hackathons like Random Hacks of Kindness and the International Space Apps Challenge, open up time for the strategies and tool gaps to be acted upon through 48-hour code and design sprints around specific challenges. Those new to the digital response space have a chance to learn through doing and for the growing community to strengthen their social ties and experiment with communication platforms before things are on fire. The Humanitarian Toolbox houses these challenges and the code built around them, and Geeks Without Bounds mentors and accelerates projects and teams to full deployment in the field and procurement by the formal sector. For example, Tarifa is an open source reporting and triage platform for infrastructural and civic issues ranging from water points to education. Recently deployed in the Iringa district of Tanzania, Tarifa links participatory mapping to water engineers for a full feedback loop from reported breaks to repair to payment for and notification of fix. This process updates the water point database for better resource allocation and repairing and installing points to the Ministry of Water. The Tanzanian-specific branch of the code was introduced to the community via hackathons and is now maintained by a local crew housed in the Kino Innovation Space in Dar es Salaam. More on that at tarifa.org.
Born out of a random hex of kindness, Bachao is a distress signal application which, when activated, alerts a set list of people of your GPS location and begins capturing and streaming whatever information is available to the phone. Specific to the social issues, telephony structures, and legal expectations of Bangalore, the evidence is court-admissible and stored away from the device. It was written and continues to be developed at Sakshin in Bangalore. You can learn more at thebachaoproject.org. And Digital Democracy worked with the Coalition of Victims for Victims, COVID-19, in Port-au-Prince, which provides resource and guidance for victims of gender-based violence. When the 24-7 free-to-call hotline gained so much notoriety that the location of the callers exceeded the geographically contextual knowledge of the call center staff, a searchable private repository of resource listings needed to be built. Through a weekend-long event, the women of the call center designed their own interface, and students from the local technical college SE built it out with an international team and continue to maintain it. Learn more at the digitaldemocracy.org site. These are just a few examples of an expanding ecosystem of connected communities coming into its own, ready to make more interesting mistakes than what has come before. We contribute to each other's code bases. We talk to field people about what their needs are. We have tools. We have willing people. We have formal organizations opening up. But we need clearer communication channels. We need to know who can lift what and how to make specific requests that will be responded to. And we need policies and practice which insist that the most marginalized in an affected population are those we listen the hardest for. The gaps here are rarely technological in nature, although technology speeds up and supports these interactions. We need stronger social fabric through intentional building and interaction. If the distributed, adaptive, aware systems we build truly are to make humanity better off, humanity itself must also be tended to. We must bring our methodologies of more equal interactions of unconferences, hackathons, and global community to bear on the challenges of response, and beyond, with documentation and with humility. And then see where else those approaches apply, not in technical imperialism, but in innovation. Does a known methodology or shape or material that worked in one place apply to this other space as well? I've been an organizer, a facilitator, an advocate, and a researcher, a global collaborator and partner. I've been a founder and director of Space Federation and Geeks Without Bounds, as well as a makerspace in Seattle called Jigsaw Renaissance. I've been a coordinator for the Digital Humanitarian Network and enjoy parsing with UN OSHA and MetHope. I've worked with amazing groups of people to put on over 50 hackathons in the social good space since 2010. I've done research on the history, rhetoric, and reality of such hackathons. I've worked with the Center for Civic Media at the MIT Media Lab, the Harvard Berkman Center for Internet and Society, Aston University, Global Voices, Occupy Sandy, FEMA, and even the World Bank. I've deployed to disaster zones and austere areas, and I've listened hard in each of these places. I've worked on the co-design toolkit, spoken at hacker conferences, advocated for free and open source development, and drawn more stick figures to help tell stories across language barriers than bears counting. Every single thing mentioned in this video, I had the honor and responsibility of interacting with directly as a leader, as a participant, and as a team member. We cannot blame socioeconomic differences, atrocities, and low adoption rates on failing computer technology. We must start to look instead at understanding human connection in this new digital age. It's time to take what we've learned and built in digital response and extrapolate it to everyday governance and mutual aid at a global scale. It's all the same world, after all. We are ready to build the systems and infrastructures of the future. We're ready to listen.